Thanks for joining me on episode 593 of the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. I'm Wade Galt. I challenge you to invest in yourself, invest in others, develop your influence, and impact the world by using your time, your talent, and your treasures to live out your calling. Having the ability to live to work instead of working to live is key and one way to be inspired. To do that, listen to this, the Inspired Stewardship Podcast with my friend, Scott Mader. Things like physical exercise help us deal with grief. Things like social time help us deal with grief. And one thing I hate about this term, we we keep talking about social distancing. The truth is right now what we need is physical distance. We need space between us in the physical world. But socially, we can continue to talk to people on the phone, to reach out to them through FaceTime and Zoom. Welcome and thank you for joining us on the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. If you truly desire to become the person who God wants you to be, then you must learn to use your time, your talent, and your treasures for your true calling. In the Inspired Stewardship Podcast, you will learn to invest in yourself, invest in others, and develop your influence so that you can impact the world. In today's episode about impacting the world by stewarding your time, I talk with you about why grief and tragedy affect your use of time, how time can affect grief and tragedy itself, and why this is so important right now. As we talk about stewarding your time, wouldn't it be great if you could support this podcast and do it without just taking too long? Turns out you can't. All you have to do is use inspiredstewardship.com slash Amazon when you're ready to make a purchase via Amazon, and a small commission will come back to support the show just that quick. If you enjoy the show when you are ready to buy from Amazon, just use inspiredstewardship.com slash Amazon. Grief and tragedy affect us deeply. If you've ever had a situation where you've been grieving, maybe the loss of a family member, the loss of a friend, the loss of a job, something in your life that has changed and it's caused you to go through the process of dealing with that and finding out what's your new normal in this new situation. You know, a lot of us right now, culturally, uh, across the world, there's a lot of us dealing with grief and tragedy as we go through this, this pandemic. You see people on all sides, people that are processing this in all different ways and lashing out at others and acting in ways that they probably would not act if everything was normal. And oftentimes, a lot of that response is actually coming out of dealing with grief. See, grief affects our brain. It affects our biology. It affects our ability to sleep. It affects our ability to form memories. It affects our ability to process information. It affects our health, our well-being deeply. And I'm not talking here about depression or something like that, but just the dealing with the, quote, normal grief. And you may not realize it, but you're probably dealing with grief right now. You're, you're grieving being able to go to church like normal, being able to go to the store like normal, being able to spend time with your friends like normal. You're grieving the normality that you used to have just a few short weeks ago. And your brain and your body are trying to process that and adapt to a new normal. And it may be causing you to react to things in a way that you would normally not react. See, it affects our ability to process information, to focus. It affects our ability to form memories. If you've ever been dealing with grief, you probably found yourself thinking about the thing that you were grieving much more than you were thinking about other things. It it affects the way our brain processes information. And what that means is it affects our ability to be productive. It affects our ability to use our time well. You may be beating yourself up right now. You've seen the memes going around about how you should be hustling and working and making everything 
perfect right now, how you should be learning a new skill, learning a new ability. You should be getting everything done that you've been putting off around the house. And you've even seen posts from people that are doing that. And you may feel guilty if you're not doing the same, or maybe you're not being as productive as you would like to be right now. But recognize that some of that is because you're dealing with the very normal emotion of grief. Give yourself that time and that space and the right to grieve. It's not wrong to be sad when things change. It's not wrong to be sad. And the truth is, the people that really care about you will be there through the sadness with you. They'll be there after the sadness is over. They'll be walking beside you both before and after. See, grief and tragedy can be affected by time, just like they can affect your use of time. They actually, you've heard the thing of, you know, time heals all wounds. Well, that may or may not always be true with grief. Sometimes you continue to grieve forever. It doesn't actually heal. It doesn't get better. It doesn't go away. Instead, it's almost like a scar that begins to get healed over and it begins to go away a little bit, but it's always there. You can always see it. It's always there under the surface. And you need to recognize the fact that this situation may cause that same sort of thing. You may not ever return to, quote, normal if normal is defined as exactly the way you were before any of this happened. But what you can do with the help of friends, with the help of your family, with the help of people around you who care about you and support you, what you can do is begin to move through the grief and come out the other side with a new normal. Not necessarily better, not necessarily worse, but definitely different. It won't be the same as it was before. And that is okay as well. It's okay that things change. It's okay that things do not remain the same forever. In fact, some of the things that you probably had going on in your life before, some of the things that were the normal before, you may not want to return to. What I'm suggesting is you actually be proactive in thinking about what do you want this new normal to look like for you for your family, for your friends? What do you want your use of time to look like when you come out of this? What do you want to learn from this and produce from this? What do you want to let back into your life? And what do you want to decide, you know, in the new normal, this doesn't get a room in my life anymore. This doesn't get to come back into my life the way it used to be. I want to leave this to the side. Because as time passes, The truth is, your normal will only be what you make it, what you allow it to become. You've got to be an active participant in this process. Even now, while you're dealing with grief, you've got to find the way to be as active as you can. Things like physical exercise help us deal with grief. Things like social time help us deal with grief. And one thing I hate about this term, we we keep talking about social distancing. The truth is right now what we need is physical distance. We need space between us and the physical world. But socially, we can continue to talk to people on the phone, to reach out to them through FaceTime and Zoom. And yes, it's not the same as sitting down together being in the physical space together, being able to to hold each other's hand, to give each other a hug. But it's better than nothing. It's still a step in the right direction. So make sure you're continuing to surround yourself with a social network of people who care about you and lift you up, the people who will be there now while you are sad and later as you return to a normal that's the new normal for you. Thanks for listening. Thanks so much for listening to the Inspired Stewardship Podcast. As a subscriber and listener, we challenge you to not just sit back and passively listen, but act on what you've heard and find a way to live your calling. If you like this episode on the stewardship of time, be sure to sign up for our Stewardship of Time Tips series by going to InspiredStewardship.com. 
dot com slash time or texting four four two 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 time tips and that'll get you our best tips on stewarding your time. Until next time, invest your time, your talent, and your treasures, develop your influence, and impact the world.